Uh, hi all, uh, welcome to another video of the subject power system analysis and based on the KTU syllabus and we are on module 5 and today we are going to discuss the various constraints of the unit commitment okay unit commitment problem in the previous uh, video uh, we have discussed the basics of the unit commitment and in that uh, I have seen that the uh, allocation of the given units okay that is the uh, given generation units to the uh, load okay may be affected by some of the constraints okay so that constraints we are going to discuss in this videos the first one is the spinning reserve constraint okay so uh, the spinning reserve is defined as the total amount of generation available from all units synchronized to the grid minus the load demand and the losses being supplied okay so actually the spinning reserve is the uh, uh, additional generation okay additional generation that may be used uh, in some contingencies okay so that is equal to the amount of generation available from all the units minus the load demand minus the losses so there will be some additional generation available there okay so spinning reserve is very essential in an interconnector system as loss of a large unit in the system may result in under frequency problem okay so if, if if sufficient spinning reserve is available in the system the loss of one of the units can be taken care of by the remaining units in the system that is uh, if if uh, any one of the unit uh, is disconnected from the system maybe uh, some uh, faults and all if one of the unit is disconnected from the system so uh, the remaining units okay the, the remaining units can take care of the available loads okay by the use of the spinning reserve and all okay so some of the electric utilities prefer to have the spinning reserve a given percentage of forecasted peak demand some prefer to have the spinning reserve equivalent to the largest capacity unit in the system okay so the spinning reserve should be made available even when islanding of system takes place so uh, Spinning reserve is very essential in the case of an islanding of system. Islanding of system that is for an isolated system. If any uh, unit is out, uh, any outage of the units can be compensated by this uh, spinning reserve and all. So the total spinning reserve should be suitably distributed among the fast responding units and slow responding units, as this allows the automatic generation control system to restore frequency and interchange quickly when one of the unit fails. Okay, so that is very very important. And the next constraint is the thermal unit constraint. So the thermal plants require operating personnel to take into account the temperature and pressures of steam before a unit can be switched on or off. Okay, so the corresponding persons are near there. So if a unit is in operation for some time, it cannot be switched off instantly. It takes some time before it could be switched off. So this time is known as minimum uptime. Okay, minimum uptime and the another constraint is the minimum downtime that is if a unit is decommitted okay that is if it is not in operation mode okay if it is decommitted it takes certain minimum time that is four to eight hours minimum four to eight hours to recommit it or uh, connect it to the grid so that time is called the minimum downtime okay so there is a constraint on the number of operating personnel in the thermal plants especially if there are more than one unit in the uh, plant okay it is also a constraint and a thermal unit is never connected to the grid until the steam attains certain temperature and pressure for better efficiency of the plant okay so the fuel input to the unit from cold to the state when it can be connected to the grid does not produce any electric energy which is known as the startup cost startup cost of for uh, any generating unit okay that is a called case called case means uh, for a uh, for a long time it is the machine is not in operation that is it, it is in cool mode okay so the fuel input to the unit from called to the state when it can be connected to the grid that is it can be activated okay does not produce any electric energy which is known as startup cost okay so uh, if the unit were initially in cold condition the startup cost is maximum okay startup cost is max and it is called a cold startup cost when okay when the unit is initially in cold condition that is for a long time it is not in operation okay so the startup cost is maximum 
okay if the unit was turned off recently and is still relatively close to operating temperature and pressure so the startup cost is much lower in this case so it is known as banking startup cost that is if the unit was turned off recently if it was in operation and it was it is turned off recently so the temperature okay the machine will have the corresponding the rate and temperature near to the rate of temperature and pressure okay so that startup cost is much lower so it is called banking startup cost so this is a curve uh, between the number of hours and startup cost so uh, from the figure this is the cold startup cost and this is the banking startup cost for for a particular number of hours the banking startup cost is very much less than the cold startup cost okay so that is about the uh, thermal unit constraint and next one is the hydro constraint so the hydro system is divided into watersheds okay so each watershed is further divided into reservoirs so each reservoir supplies one or more hydro plants okay so the hydro unit commitment is performed to determine an optimal combination of units in each hour okay in each reservoir with constraints of minimum up and minimum down time and startup and shutdown cost so this commitment is more complicated when the units in the plants are not identical okay so so to decrease the number of combinations all units at a reservoir are optimized by a priority list based dynamic program so this the priority list based dynamic program is a programming is a method of unit commitment problem okay so method of solving the unit commitment problem okay so that's about the uh, three different various constraints uh, for unit commitments i hope all of you understand well so thank you